Hi everyone and welcome back to the Tormek live sharpening classes. It feels great to be back after summer holidays. Uh, I really enjoyed my summer break. I hope you guys did as well. I apologize to all Australian followers, but you have your summer coming up, so even better perhaps. Wolfgang, did you enjoy your summer holidays? Of course, but as always, too short. Too short. Great. It's a Swedish summer. Yes, it's, uh, as a Swede, summer will always be too short. Uh, for you who haven't seen us before, my name is Sebastian and I'm a country sales manager here at Tormek. And Wolfgang, you have many names, perhaps the sharpening doctor of Wolfgang. Yeah. Please present yourself. As that, as you said, as I said, you said. <laughs> sales manager for Central and South Europe. So always the way Greek, uh, Greek, um, uh, Greece, Turkey and Israel. Yeah, in Germany, the continent. Great. Uh, Today we thought we would be talking about recurved blades. Uh, we get a lot of questions about recurved blades and we also have had uh, demands or uh, preferences from you, the viewers, that wanted to see more about recurved blades. Uh, we have touched the subject through our uh, sharpening classes, but now today we thought we would go more in depth um, and discuss recurved blades. Why do you think we have so many requests and demands on recurved blades, Wolfgang? I think it's just the shape, because if it's straight, it's easy. You have flat stone, yeah. but as soon as the, it's not a concave, and it's got concave, uh, also not convex, like concave that way, you have a problem because you touch the stone only on the edges yes. or the blade. And, um, Maybe therefore, and then because it is a little bit a funny movement. Yeah. It's like a little bit crawling, or but uh, yeah, you can do it. opposite what you are used to. Normally, state uh, very static, but this is a really more three-dimensional movement. Great. I will let you um, show and start sharpening in just mm -hmm. an instant. I wanted to do two things before. First of all, I want to remind you guys that it's live, so please ask questions, and we'll try to answer them as best as possible. Uh, second of all, I would like to show you the tools we will be working on today, or the recurved blades we will be working on today. Uh, first of all, we have a scythe, which is difficult to pronounce as a Swede, uh, but you will you see what tool it is, if my pronunciation is that bad, that you don't understand it, uh, which is a bigger recurved blade. We also have a smaller peeling knife. This is also sometimes called a tournée knife. Uh, I have also uh, came across the name bird beak, but it's a recurve blade often to peel potatoes or fruit. Then we have a gut opener, which is common in hunting, a uh, very popular uh, tool in Swede amongst Swede Swedish hunters. And we get a lot of questions about this. Uh, and finally, we have some um, hunting knife with a bit of a recurve and then it has a, a normal uh, bow. I don't know if we will be sharpening all of them completely through, but we will be discussing them all. Uh, Wolfgang has also taken out a couple of different tools that will help you and accessories and jigs. We have the new KJ45 and the KJ140, which are quite new, even if, if it feels like they have been with us for a while. And then he has a, the sharpening doctor has prepared a special setup here with two MB100s and an US430, um, which can perhaps help you um, sharpen recurve blades sometimes. I think I have talked enough. I think what people really want to see is Wolfgang once again dancing with the That's machine nice. after the summer break. So the floor is yours, Wolfgang. Okay. Where should we begin? I think we, we start first with the preparations, yes. because this is the main important part. And also a short reminder, I, I think I turn around the machine a little bit too, Victor, and take off the water trough here. And want to show when you drew the stone, it's also important in the beginning, and you put your stone on the machine, Keep in mind, just in the same position, the easiest way is just horizontal that you can read the text. Because when you drew the stone, so it gets perfect round and flat, of course, but 
as you can imagine, we have here the center and you need a smaller tolerance, otherwise you would never go, uh, can um, mount the stone on the, the main shaft. So there is a little bit, it's a two hundredths of a millimeter, so it's very tight, a little bit um, play. Uh, play, a tolerance. Do you see this? So I try to show it's very, very little. It's wobbling a little bit because it's also a little bit conical. And at the end, if you think the stone, its position is on the top of the shaft. Underneath you have these two tenths or two hundredths of a millimeter on the bottom here, which is tolerance. It means the stone is that way. And this is maybe also the reason some people think when they do, the stone is going up and down, it gets oval shaped because it's sometimes something like flexible or uh, whatever, these are the old stories about the swelling stone and deforming. So yeah. there's nothing like that. The stone is fixed. There, nothing happens on that side. But to prevent this up and down movement from shifting the stones, is, if you think this distance here is short, this distance is two tenths of a millimeter longer. When you mount in the worst case the stone like that, so you have these two tenths more and shorter and you start to grind down here this part and then you get this wobbling in as, the stone as and you, you can say, avoid it. It's two tenths so it's very little but you uh, see it. to summarize it it's good always when you start truing or when you set the stone always put it with the text exactly. straight. Exactly. Then you have always in the end it is the two tenths tenth of a millimeter off center, yeah. the center, but then it's always perfect around yeah. in the same shape. So this is uh, just a recap. We named it sometimes very quickly in, in uh, one of our uh, issues here we have done in the lectures, but it's good just to have in mind. Exactly. Just a little bit more in detail and then you can start the machine and then as normal, it is fixed. Yes. And next point is you take your SVP, uh, SP650, the stone grader, and round off and then you need water. Don't do it dry because then you will ruin the stone and it's very dusty. And take the rough side and then just get, or you can do it just a while like this. You have a nice stable position with the universal support and then you get a more or less a straight and then you can round it off. The bigger the radius is, the easier it is to sharpen of course. If you have maybe two millimeters here and two millimeters on the other side, uh, so I've made the preparation already, it takes about maybe two minutes or so yeah. to grind it round and shape it. You will lose it in the horizontal, maybe these um, two millimeters each side, but it's not affecting the straight knives at all. Uh, vice versa, it is it's more forgiving if you just come with a straight knife, also a little bit uh, diagonal or not perfectly flat on the stone, so to prevent these deep hacks. And if you want to remove it, you can just use the TT50 for one reason or not, you would like the, the edges back. Absolutely, then uh, you get aggressive edges again yeah. if you want. So, but I prefer a little bit around it. And maybe some of the viewers have a very old machine, they remember their sandstone, they had rounded edges anyway. Yeah. So. But it could be a, a, a good tip to, if, the, if it's the first time you, you sharpen a recurve blade, to take quite a lot from the edges because it's yeah. more forgiving and it's easier uh, as a first time user. Also for the beginners, for straight knives yeah. also. And, and the more you get confident, perhaps the less you have to take away because you don't want to yep. remove too much stone. Absolutely. Because what we do, we sharpen mostly for the recurved a blade for the concave shapes on the edge. Yeah. So that means when you sharpen against, it is quite aggressive. Yeah. With a little pressure on the our normal original uh, grinding stone, it is okay. Be careful, don't do get a catch. For the Japanese stone, later on, I wouldn't recommend it. 
so it's better to go with the direction, also not edge, tra uh, edge trailing, not edge leading. Leading, yeah. Now, since you're going on the edge, the catch, the risk of a catch is two. is way bigger, and the Japanese yeah. stone is very soft. Uh, exactly. As perhaps some of the viewers has experienced, and then if you go on the edge, the risk of a catch is, is very big. Exactly. This stone is quite solid. The other yeah. is is soft. Myself. I wouldn't do it personally. Straight knives, no problem, but recurved. No. Oh. Great. It's an expensive yeah, stone yeah, yeah. and uh, you want to not to true it too often because no. it's also a big mess to true them. Yes. Before we, we start really sharpening, I want to just show because we go on the edge if we go against it. So this is why it is very aggressive. On the outside with the moving, uh, with the movement, you have more space than on the inside. If you interfere with the ladder, if you have a bigger knife, just remove it. It is no problem. Or you can do everything on the outside. It works also then it's, I can show you. It's a little bit what you prefer, how you feel. You can do it either only on the outside and, or otherwise you offer the inside also and round it off. Otherwise you can use only on one. Generally, I would say more people find it more comfortable to use both sides because it feels easier. The advantage with only doing yep. it on the outside is that you only have to round off one edge. Exactly. Uh, so it's... Uh, and it uh, depends how the recurve, how big it is because you are limited here through the machine. Here you're completely free yeah. in, the, in the movement. And um, I think we start with the thighs. Yeah. But important for the thighs turn around the machine because this is freehand and impossible to do it against. So it's good. It's like when you do it by hand, when yeah. you see it with half a stone, so you hold it in the same way on the other side. And you see the machine is against you. When you do it that way, it is very tricky. It works yeah. also. I can show you and I'll show you also the other the way. This, of course, needs a little bit more training because the edges. We go with the size also very flat in the angle. And as you see, this is very short bevel here. In the inside, it's a little bit longer. So it's quite thin. But from the feeling here, sometimes I think you need to smith it out a little bit thinner to thin it out later on but you don't see it as a customer but you feel it when it's getting too thick you need to hammering a little bit thinner it's not only sharpening and then it's very thin then i would do it from the other side so i don't know is it okay for you victor from this side or shall i turn a little bit the machine and um, so no pressure you guide it flat and a little bit uh, do you see it maybe from the top where the water flowing? Because then you see quite good. This is also the advantage when you go against the, the direction because you get the water, you see exactly where you on the stone. Because when you do it from the other side, you don't see the water on the, on the edge. So it's not completely flat. It's a little bit lifted on the side. As you see, I go, no pressure, stable, lift it up and then you see, it's only the half of the stone I use. And here it's a little bit more straight. And you can use the stone completely. Just the water off. Because you're collecting the water on the side. And then, now it's maybe Victor is seeing oops, the uh, movement, what I do, are sta quite stable and go, it's like when you use it, you turn the body, don't try to, this is, this. it's better you have them stable and then you move with your body, you have the much better body. control. This is what I mean with dancing yeah, with the machine. Yeah. <laughs> and so this even here from the sides, you can do it this way, you need a little bit more experience of course, because against, maybe in the beginning you're afraid of it, yeah, and um, what I think, perhaps as a beginner, you, you, the risk is that you will get the catch here as well if you go too steep. And, and too that, much pressure. Yeah, and that could be a bit uh, frightening. Um, 
So we if it's your it. first scythe you, you sharpen, I would recommend to go I could take it on the uh, other way. How you show now with so, the We are not so trained now where in which to no. no. <laughs> So this is much easier. You see it's now against me. Then the movement is like this, so I have to hold a little bit also against when you need more pressure. And this is exactly the same. You take the angle, can nice pressure, which, but you see the water is on this side. I don't see really. No, you don't get the, uh, the, the control view. This is a little bit more training, but a good eye, a good light. One of the advantages when you go over, the advantage is because it pushes against you and you have here in the thighs, nice with the finger because it's mostly a, you want the, when you cut the grass, lift off here. You have a nice pressure, you have a good, a good feeling, a good yeah. contact to the stone. And the other thing is a little bit... And a good grip as well. Yeah. And this is also really easy, just again. You see with the body, I turn my body on the upside. Do this movement. Yes, and this demands a little bit of training, uh, but also on a scythe, how the bevel looks aesthetically is perhaps not as important on, as on your most expensive kitchen knife. Yeah, exactly. And on the other side, it's very important to have a good, because you want easy cutting. Yeah. Yeah. And then again, you don't need really, you just hoon very little, not too much, because you want, it's like a saw a little bit to cut the grass because it's quite hard and you have to movement and keeps in place and it cuts when it's yeah. too, <coughs> like a razor blade, it can be that the grass bends and you cut it higher up, not in the bottom. Yeah, that is a bit of a theoretical question. I've heard people working with thighs a lot that even say that they want some burr left, or yeah, quite exactly. a lot of burr, because, because it will catch, catch the, the, the grass. Otherwise, you cut, really you cut it, it holds in place. If it's too, it can slide up and yeah. then you cut them in a higher. So for so. once, the burr actually can help us when we cut grass. Exactly. Great. And then if you just want to rebuild, it's exactly the same. Keep in mind, normally you do it from that side for yeah. the knives and everything, but in this, it's coming to you because the, the edge is also yeah. to you. Otherwise you will cut into the leather. You do it only once. And we will sell more leather honing wheels. Exactly. So this is a way to get a quite... Great. Thank you, Wolfgang. Uh, that was our biggest recurved blade we had for the day. Exactly. Uh, where do you want to go next? I would say we go, because it's also a little bit freehand or with a jig. Yeah. When I go do the back, uh, gut opener yes. and I do freehand, then I go, of course, because the bevel is quite wide from this side here. If you prefer, you can, for example, have in whatever position Use everything you have to get a, a stable grip. Try your method, the distance, how you feel um, comfortable to get the, a, a steady the grip. When you have it like here, it's easy yeah. like that. You can do it also freehand here. It is, it's up to you, but... Where you feel the most stable would be. Yeah, exactly. And even if you take the stone, nothing happens. No, Maybe it's, get a, it's good for the next bank robbery. You are rid of your fingerprints. Perhaps <laughs> it could stone. also be good at the beginning to use the marker method. To exactly. To get, get a more exact feedback where you're taking on the bevel. Exactly. Um, the wave here. If it's just in the front or wave hit the bevel or not. You can just make it black and you see if you have really get everything. But in mostly in the, the gut opener important is of course that you get a nice sharp 
uh, edge and even here a slightly toothy edge is not a big no, it's uh, not, um, disadvantage compared to a kitchen knife. Exactly, this is not f fine work, this is to yeah. open the gut of an animal, so it's more... Uh, because a lot of dirt and it's hard. Yeah. And, and then you can go... And then depends on, you see, I go down because you see quite, quite good here. Here I was a little bit off. So it's not important all the way. You can do it next time when you go a little bit more, if you have one more and even. The problem is, or not the problem, yeah. Every gut open have a, a round tip or like this here, some, some dull part because yeah. you don't like to, to pinch one of the organs or the, the intestines. So this is the problem when you just go further, of course, you will Take it off. have a problem. So then therefore you have to go a little bit down to the machine. But you will see when you come here, you, you touch, touch it here and you can't reach the, the edge in. When it's just nice and slow, you can... You see, I don't move my hand, only the finger. You have a nice, easy, you see, movement. On the other side is exactly the same. I go here, go on the outside, turn a little bit flat on it. And here I have the advantage because I have this side. I don't have to go around because then I can go really all the way in here. And if you want a little bit of finer finish, not as rough as it is here. You can just use also the fine side of the stone. The fine side of the stone, and make it also down to 1,000. Then you get also a little bit a finer finish. So this is all. If you want a quick fix yeah. and don't care about it's nicely polished and, and fine. I think it's different on an outdoor knife. This is a really a, a tool yeah. which you maybe prefer a little bit. Uh, a bite, then it's really what I think we could stress what you did like uh, when with the marker uh, as that you just made one stroke and then you looked at the marker to see that the movement was correct uh, uh, and that's a good idea that just marker one stroke and then look to see where you are yeah. in the, the good thing is also when you do it a few times then and you know, you have, it's like the muscle memory again. Oh, it feels too long away or yeah. too, too short, or feel for tight. Yeah. So you, you get your feeling and then you find it very, very easily. Like very often it happens to us when you put here the universal support, the knife, we check, yeah. and then we are very, very close to the angle. Yeah. It's just a fine adjustment. This is, this is just routine. Yeah, training and, yeah. and experience. And sometimes you want to show exactly the things are yeah. <laughs> a little bit more if you have to adjust, then we hit instantly the right position. So, But this is a little bit training. And then again, here, if you want to get rid of the burr, which is good, the same thing, just nice pressure over the edge. And then you can go a little bit flat over in. Then you see it is taking a little bit because the friction. And on the other side too nice over to get in the corner and then you get really I feel it is nice bite on it yeah great and as with the scythe if you are not as experienced as Volkan it doesn't have to look perfect the bevel uh, even if it's just a a gut opener, it doesn't, yeah. it's not your home kitchen knife. This was the freehand style. Now I want to show you, uh, you can do it with the, the chick, yes. of course, too. And I show it how it works on, when you do it against it. Because then you have a little bit of guiding. But I prefer the freehand is much easier and, yeah. and faster in that way. Because you have quite a bevel you see where you are. 
and clamping that one is a little bit like that, quite because it's one more or less same shape in the in the middle of it, and then you see you have one problem when you go flat, you will hit the, the, jig. the jig. You can go a little bit, of course, outside to prevent, but then you have the right angle here, but this is longer away, so yeah. you have to... Adjust your movement. Exactly. Therefore, it is more tricky. I think freehand, it is it's easier. And then the movement, you can do it... Oh, this was not so bad from the angle. You can use the small one here. Yeah. The, our, uh, how shall we have no name for the, uh, yeah, the stopper the, here. The, the second stop. The second stop, <laughs> yeah. Because then you have this movement. And then here you have to go a little bit in. And then it's try to find the same spot because then you're on the same, and well, correct, the same angle. It's a bit more complicated on the gut opener with the jig due to this little um, yep. thing here at the, at the, at the point. Uh, yep. Because we, the on, the, on uh, peeling knife we don't have that. Exactly. And, then the, and that is what makes the jig a bit more complicated on the gut yeah. opener. Then you have here. Here you have no problem, but when you would do it, everything on the outside here, you see, it doesn't work. Then you have really, you have to use vice versa, the inside here. Because you see, you will cut. Then you need both sides. Yeah. So therefore, it is, it's quite good. You get maybe the angle quite good, stable. I prefer maybe Freehand. one or two strokes more with less pressure than here. I can use a little bit more pressure because yeah. I have a, a stop here. So which makes it more. So stable. this is something what you have to elaborate and find your, your way, what ideal you, solution exactly. or ideal way so to do it. Many ways. Yeah. And there's no way more or less wrong. It is mm -hmm. only the ways you can help you. Be before I let you uh, move on to the peeling knife, I think it's our next one. Uh, we had a question from yep. Paul Di Stefano, I think. He said he heard a small squeaking sound, which he hears with his drills as well sometimes. This, because it's long away, it, you get vibrations, yeah. like the, the drill also. And it also has, yeah, so it's vibrations, uh, and it has to do with if it's long away, and it's also sometimes the due angle. To the angle. So, for example, if you have sharpened scissors on Extreme. the tall neck, uh, you can really get the squeaking yeah. sound. But it's not, no danger at all. It's just exactly a bit, because uh, you come with the scissors quite in a 60, 66 um, degree yeah. on it, and you clamp, and then you have outside, and it starts yeah. vibrating. So it's nothing you do wrong. It's just yep. a bit annoying sound. Yep. Uh, great. Should you move on to the? Yep. Tournée knife, perhaps. Then I show also the, the way. The principle for all the knives is absolutely the same. The ones are a little bit more bent, the others a little bit less bent. And when I clamp this here, it's the same. I go quite on the outside, not to touch the um, uh, Jig, and so the, try to get it quite even. You can go here, but the risk is a little bit more difficult, maybe. I've tried it before, a little bit longer in. And then we do it trailing, the edge trailing. You can do it here from that side, but it is mostly a little bit also, you can, of course, the angle. Marker method is good. Exactly. Uh, now, your experience, Wolfgang, we know. Uh, but but we for, as, as a beginner, the marker method is perfect um. to get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see? You're trying to point out that, that you still got it after summer break. <laughs> mm. 
sometimes <laughs> things work perfectly. Or you're just lucky, I don't know. <laughs> no, sometimes you, you play and you don't get it. No. This is, is also, there's nothing between. <laughs> and it's the same thing. Then I use the big one, the, the stop, not the short one. The normal stop. Yeah. You can do it also, then you have to go closer, but then the risk is... Yeah, that things will be yeah. in the way. And also, maybe think on one line on the stone to touch the same angle and then going over here and then it's getting straight. You see this, this movement? Not, not exactly here, but there. And then you don't need to be straight behind the stone. You can have also a little bit from the chick, you see. But these knives, to be honest, you don't use the, the, the um, stone on, on 220 mm. because normally these knives are not heavy damage. No, no. Even you can just go on the Japanese stone, what we do later also. And here is the same because you can do it here on the inside, but then you see it is a lot of getting quite way. difficult. Yeah. It is much easier to go here on the outside and you can take a little bit. And also to Oops. be perfectly transparent, yep. um, recurve blades are a bit more complicated. Yep. They take a bit more practice than the normal uh, knives. And this is what I want to show when you come here. Yeah. And now come our special trick. I showed the two MB100. Yeah. These knives I do normally not with a chick either. I do it freehand because it's very small. Yeah. The same thing. But if you prefer the chick, now we do the magic. The, Just stop the, the machine. Uh, sharpening doctor special setup. Exactly. You can use this or which is a little bit easier than you don't need to adjust in the length. I can show you how to do it. What you will need is two MB100. It's so like a frontal, a vertical frontal base. Just down in the bottom, in here, on the side. And then you can use your normal one. You can, you can use it here, then you have enough space. Or then you can go over here also. Or even if you go on the outside, then you have more here, or then you're off. Yeah, so with MB100 you get like multiple arms and, and more uh, possibilities. Even here I showed you one screw is on the inside, one is on the outside, just to show you can move it on both sides. Yeah. You can take them out, just um, mount them and fix it here if they are in the way. So this is really use it in all positions, in all angles, or you can turn around, use this and then you're closer here and pull yeah. it down. So there are so many possibilities now depends on the tool on the tool size on the angle just play yeah it's, it's really you get everything Th this is not a necess necessity uh, we must add but it's a possibility and you get a lot of options not only for for these types of knives but with them be 100 and and all the, you have possibilities to come to complete new angles, uh, exactly, which could be an advantage in, in many different applications. And more comfortable. So I have to go a little quite close here. I think, yes, there. Well, not on the throw, so like that. And then, for example, the good thing is if you want to hoon, you go just down and can hoon on that side yeah. immediately. So. And then launch it with US 430, since it's longer, you can use it as yeah. for both for shortening and holding. A little bit too high. Well, the pen was here. Slightly up. 
all screws are blocked. Yes. And the same thing here. You can go here and it's much easier on that side. And then even here, you see, because you are free here, much higher. The other yeah. was too close to the stone. So this is a big advantage. So this is like, yeah, you have a frontal base. Yeah. Victor, perhaps we should come on the back side here and show Wolfgang's spaceship of a setup. <laughs> the uh, spaceship setup. Or shall I turn around? Yeah. What do you prefer? Then I go close it. It looks very complicated. But you turn. Take two pieces because then you can even move this. You can move even open here if you go further away and want to get more free underneath. Then you can open here, you can go up, you can block here again. There are um, many, many. Yeah, you have so many arms, you have yeah, you, a lot of possibilities. Really, you can find everything. And it's really, it is stable also. It looks quite fragile out, but it's really, it's stable. Yeah. We got a question from Dagar. Is the vertical fixture required to use the extended bar? Uh, no, it's no, no. Not, not at all. Uh, the extended bar is uh, for, it's longer this way and it has, I can show you, compared to the normal US support, it has longer legs and it's a longer bar and you can use it for example if you have very long cleavers or if you have you're sharpening a sword it could be an advantage if you have a cleaver it's an exactly. advantage to have longer legs and if you have a sword it's an advantage to have a longer uh, support bar so it can be used just as Both the sides. normal support bar you think you're quite high here for meat cleaver and then you don't need to here you can use it here also you gain another two and a half yeah. centimeters uh, Perfect. No. So, and you can use Wolfgang's MB100 setup with the normal support bar as well. Also, yeah, uh, so because you have a, here you can move, uh, you have here the way, or you can turn it around. There are many, many possibilities, of yeah. course. Let's use that again because it's more. As a, you can also turn it around that that part is on that side. Then you just flip it over the 180 degrees. Yeah. So it is completely versatile now. Ossi Crow says, that's a great show in how the MB100 can be used, but not everyone has the Tormek factory behind them. And realistically, <laughs> freehand and practice seems to be the Absolutely. only Absolutely. Yeah. Well, on the other side, when you think uh, on the third part, party market, you have these frontal ver uh, vertical front base. Yeah. Uh, if you have these two, it's the same price, but then you have additional another yeah. one, so it's no. at the end also cheaper. So as I said, perhaps people don't have as many recurve blades, then you learn to do it on freehand. Freehand, absolutely. What you wanted to show was just that there are possibilities uh, if you are a sharpening service and you sharpen a lot of recurve blades, or if you have a lot of blades and uh, you have to uh, do the same angle, you yeah. have to replicate and you do quite no. amount then it is another question if you have just one then do it freehand yeah like i've done it it's much easier yes and faster or easier is both but it's faster and money saving so we showed that way went just a little bit down again or a little bit in you're a little bit too far away no so, because then we have to set up for the next, always for fun, get too high, yeah. And this is also, you start high and the movement is, then you see I use only from the distance, from the point here, I move maybe five millimeters, the maximum of four. Yeah. So that is not a big change in the angle. So that's 
one solution as well. Yeah. Then we go for another stone, which is for the most people the, the stone of, uh, not saying destiny, but it's a little bit tricky and more people getting frustrated when they get a catch. Yeah. Compared to that stone, it's very difficult to get a catch. Uh, happens nothing with the stone, but you get a hook. But here in the stone, you get a chip and to, to avoid it. Yeah, so what we show now is the Japanese water stone, the SG250, yep, right? Exactly. So, water trough in there, water up. Uh, there was the screw, some was sounding. It's mostly also when we get a uh, question, there's a strange sound in the machine, it's mostly vibrating, the, one of the screws are open. Yeah. Especially when you have the uh, universal support and it's the screw, you will hear it. And here's the same. I think you don't need too much adjustment because the diameter is more or less the same on both. A little bit more. So, again, the same movement, and then you have no issues to get a catch in the stone. The only tricky part is be carefully not to not fall off the edge. Exactly, because here you start a little bit. Only here you can add a nice pressure, and mostly they are straight in the beginning. And when you go, even here, you can go in both ways because when you go from the other side, the risk is that you're cutting deep yeah. in, um, uh, in the stone. Uh, because always when you say the filleting knife, when you sharpen the, the rounding part here, you're digging more or less always down the hill. But when you're edge trailing, it is, you can go in both sides. There's no risk for, for digging in. And then you can just great. Thank you, Wolfgang. I think we should move yep. on you to see the nicely parallel also the dirt. Yeah. I think we should move on to the uh, hunting knife. Yes. Because the gut opener and the uh, peeling knife are quite similar, similar in technique. Now we have an additional curve. Yes. In and uh -huh. out and round again. Yes. It's what a I do? Different movement. Yeah. What I do here? Uh, this is so like yeah, Bowie Puma knife. To uh, clamp it, not like the straight now here in the middle. I go here over where I have the curve, which is in the radius to get the even. Um, angle, fix it, and with the new KG45, you get it automated, nicely centered uh, bevel in the middle, because it's a little bit of a thicker blade, and now it's here, it's parallel, it works fine, but it's getting a little bit smaller to the tip, so because it's flexible, fits nicely and perfectly and to the blade, the blade. Yeah. Uh, if, if you would be sharpening this knife on a regular SG stone, would you go edge trailing or edge leading? I've done this in both ways. Yeah. Um, of course, I can show you, it's a, a little bit more tricky. It works because, as I said, the stone is hard, yeah. not too much pressure and you, you need to develop the feeling. Yeah. You can do it dry without moving the stone just to get how the shape is, to follow the shape. Uh, on a Japanese stone, because it, it's softer, it is not too much friction, no. it is easier, of course. I would never do, normally blades, I do it straight blades, no problem. No. Rounded edges, you don't get the catch. And on the tip, you yeah, need to be careful, otherwise you, you dig in, of course. Yeah. This, there are small risks. It's not so often I myself got a catch. Yeah. But here, 
it is absolute secure yeah. edge trading. But here it wouldn't be a problem without your advanced setup. You uh, uh, this knife you could have just without the double MB yep. uh, 100. One advantage is here, you get a little bit nicer, more even edge. Yeah. Because it's a, if you want a nice plate, yeah. have a nice plate. You can do it freehand, of course, too. Yeah. But um, it's getting more difficult, of yeah. course. You can do it, but... But you could, could you do it with a jig and... And the normal, you, you then, yeah, then you have the same problem here with the knobs yeah. because you're very close over with the cheek because you're coming up here from the stone here very, very tight. Yeah. It's better you have a little bit more distance, especially because you need the, the space yeah. for the movement. Yeah. I'm just checking it should be... How are you doing it? <laughs> Again, <laughs> you see, it is, it's perfect. So we don't need to change, otherwise you have to adjust the heights here. Yeah. It's like uh, with the normal plates. Then you start the machine, again, holding. You don't need to be straight, just think this is something you, you help to just control the angle. Yeah. And then try to find the same angle and then you try to keep here. You have no chance, you will lose about two millimeters. But when you come here, you go up the stone. And go down. And follow. And here you use the marker method as well to yep. make sure for the angle and, and things. Uh, here, perfectly. Here in the middle, a little bit more. We have here on the side. We have a couple. Here. Really nice finish already here, that way, yeah, a little bit more. We have a couple of viewers that find the, um, your setup a bit expensive and would like if it would be possible for us to show how you would without, do the move without, yes. On the... And perhaps do it on the... Because I think you would do it... Uh, not on a Japanese stone. No, not on the Japanese stone, but if you go back to the straight, uh, normal stone perhaps, and yep. then we show... Um, just a basic movement with this kind of... Uh, of course, of course. We have like this in one piece. For those who have and maybe purchased a third part vertical yeah. front base, they can use Th that as well. Of course. Uh, you don't need to buy this separately. But if you haven't and you want to decide because some buy it, then it is at the end the same price or cheaper, you have more possibilities because you can go also on the outside of the, the stone, which you can't do otherwise. So it has some advantages. So this for a Japanese stone, I wouldn't go because the risk is to, to cut here yeah. on the edge. Straight is no problem. No. But we do the other stone. Uh. Richard said that he thinks the front vertical base could work with the same setup as you did. And Absolutely. That, that's what you just mentioned, yep. that that could be... For those who have a front vertical base, a third part, they can use yeah. it. Others who want to buy one, then you have to consider... Which option is... If you have uh, diamond wheels, which maybe we should name it here too. This is what we do now here. It is impossible on the diamond wheels yeah, exactly. because you have no... You have to round off the edges to be able exactly. to do this. So it works only with stones. Great. Um, then uh, you should maybe consider it is if you buy a front word base, third part, and the MB100, it's more expensive than maybe buying two. So that way we have to go quite a bit up. And this is what we also what we show here it works also on a T4. Yes. Of course. Exactly. This is because we get sometimes the question also it was a little bit too much. Yeah, and all, all our pen classes, uh, everything that works on the T8 works at, uh, on the T4 as well, as you said. So it's not only for this episode, but in general. Exactly. But we show it only on a bigger format because it's yeah. easier to show on the on the camera. So I go, the outdoor knives sometimes are very hard. When you go on 1,000 grit, it takes a little bit longer, but you have to go 
down to a 1000 anyway or you don't wait too long then you can go immediately on 1000 because when it's heavy damaged of course you have to grind down a little bit more yeah so just checking the the angle a little bit more up but very close This also a little bit, I think, the live class shows today what you can do. You can play with the machine, so then nothing is really the trick. This Although just different like possibilities. Yeah. Uh, the wood turning tools, it's just three. The recipe, you yeah. have to adjust these three things and you can repeat it. Here, every knife blade is different. Takes. Yeah, the recurved blades are different. They have different shapes and different um, sizes. Or um, like. I think Victor, you named it a kukuri, the Japanese, uh, the Japanese, the Nepalese knife, which come up. It's like this knife, just bigger, and it's bent here and goes over, and then you have the round. It's the same method, but here you have a problem. This is only possible from the other yeah. side to to sharpen because everything is the recurve is more distinct and the the curve is the, the curve distinct. is steeper than yeah. and then. The placement, even there are many different types of the kukui, a little bit more bent, less bent, thicker and mm. curved. Depends where the placement of the, the cheek is in, in the curve. Because you want to maintain, of course, most of the... Yes, this should work. Yep. Yeah. Then I don't go that way, then I go here from the inside. You see, just here, over, turn around, going up on the stone, like the normal blade, and, and then downhill here, it's okay, but then you, this is what we say, this is an uphill, you're digging in, therefore I would go that way only, stone, oops, you see, this is when you get a catch, talk and don't control all the way. I would go with this knife only these movements because when you go down here you will dig in and I touch a little bit the, the leather, it's a little bit in the way, just slightly, but just remove it and I'll show you it doesn't work. We exactly. talked a lot, lot in our live sessions about when you go to the point you want to lift up the knife to get the, the point of the knife. And here when you yeah. want to take the curve you have to press the knife down yeah. instead. Uh, because otherwise you have to go like, like this going over but then you touch here so it is not possible. Therefore I really go here only that way, not digging in here because you will get more and more deep and it doesn't look beautiful now the it is very looks very rough compared to before therefore i like this on on the japanese stone but you see you get a nice yeah. could you show the movement one last time so people yeah. see i, think I can maybe uh, show without the noise then they see from here handle a bit down down very slowly and then when you see you come here to more or less straight and you come up then lifting and then when you lift don't if it's bigger then you end up here on the edge really go on the stone and lift that you don't touch the edge and the lifting here if you go too far of course you change the angle this is like every knife we have yeah. It's a lifting, this is a little bit draining because then you will lose the tip. It gets rounder or more straight because it's like, if you think 90 degrees, it's getting rounder, it doesn't look nice. What you can do is also when you go this movement here, you can, you see, I go out of the machine towards uh, Victor, out of the machine, forward. And then you see I go a little bit upwards. It's not like this. I go a little bit like that because the movement is here. Then you shape also a nice, nice tip. 
the risk to round it off is minimum. But don't go too far because you see, I, I, then you have to go lifting much, much more. Then you have again a very, very small angle because you want a beautiful, nice bevel. Great. So this is not too far. This is a little bit training how much you can lift. Thank you very much, Wolfgang. Uh, I think it's great. We have shown a lot of different possibilities with the machine, mm -hmm. a lot of different options. Um, we should be perfectly transparent and say that it's more complicated with grid curve date than a normal knife. So perhaps it takes a bit more training. Uh, but here you have different options, some more advanced, some more basic. Uh, yeah. The more basic ones perhaps needs even more a touch of um, uh, training and, and skill. Um, I'm very glad to have you back. You're on fire as always. That's a pleasure. Uh, training uh, session for the next fairs now. Yeah, <laughs> now we have. You will see us a little bit more maybe in the future outside again. Yes, that's, um, that will be fun meeting people for real as well. Yeah, um, But this, this was a, a live training session. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope even more that you learn something. Uh, that would be great. Uh, as I said, thank you, Wolfgang. Thank you, thank Victor. you, Victor. You felt like you had a good, fresh start. And especially thank you, all the viewers. If you have more questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the commentary, and we answer them in writing afterwards. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay safe, and Wolfgang, stay sharp. Thank you.